So this day is Pentecost Sunday. I went over the last couple of Sundays, the different sermons. I might even want to at least bring them to your attention because today I'm not going to be long. Amen. We talked about waiting for that power on Pentecost. And then a Sunday before we talked about Pentecost power being substituted. Folks turning on these alternative power sources, generators, feeling that you can do it on your own and you don't need to pray anymore. So we substitute, turn on this auxiliary power. And so today I want to just talk about the Pentecost uh, Sunday. I want to talk about the offering, the what we call the feast of fruit. And this is what we've done. Now, we've already fast. Amen. And now we're here to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. And so I want to go over this with you. So you have a clear understanding of what we're doing today. Now, understand that there is an Old Testament and there is a New Testament. And most people think that we're not supposed to be dealing with the Old Testament. What the key is, is that we are not held accountable for all the things that were done in the Old Testament as to pertaining to the law. And that we are no longer um, going to be cursed by the law, which is death, separation even from God. So through Jesus, a New Testament has been brought before us. And that is we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. It is a gift. Amen. And so that's the only thing. But as to the Old Testament, most of the things in the Old Testament Bring us to the New Testament and tell us about Jesus coming. All right. So sometimes, and I say this because people who hear me on YouTube or radio or Facebook, and they tend to, you know, judge. And I, I just, listen, don't judge me on my liberty to do the things that I see in the Old Testament that bring blessings. And I won't judge you on your liberty to not have to do any of those things. Amen. We all have liberty in Christ. And so today, we offer up to God on this day of Pentecost, offering fasting, praying, and a holy convocation, a holy gathering of praise and worship. That's why he said, let us gather together. Let us uh, offer up praises to him together. Amen. First, first thing I would like to explain is the difference between tithes and offering and Pentecost offering. Pentecost is a free will offering. Amen. Freely given. Amen. Freely. Everybody say freely. All right. No pressure. No pressure. You give or you don't give. Amen. See, I always said that if you don't give. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Amen. Amen. Nothing. <laughs> nothing going to happen. No bad, no good. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen to you. Amen. If you give, then God said a lot of things is going to happen. And we're going to go over those things. So that's the difference. And the tithes and offerings belong to God. All right. That's not a free will offering. Now, the offering may be free will because it's like a tip of blessings. The tithes are always 10 percent or whatever God has blessed you with. And then the offering is a tip for him being so good. Amen. And he said, will a man rob me of tithes and offering? Amen. Will you rob me if you pay me what you owe me? But you still rob me if you don't bless me for what I've done for you. Amen. All right, so the first fruits is in Deuteronomy 16, 9 to 17. We're going to read over this because we went over everything else before. All right, and this is what it said. It said, seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee, beginning the number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest 
to put the sickle to the corn. Now, the grain, I'm telling you, y'all, that sickle, you know what a sickle is, right? They, they chomp it and they, they gather it. Now, there are three times a year that they, they, they harvest. Now, this time happened to be the grain harvest. Amen. And so God said to them, and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God. For he said, this is his feast. Amen. And he wants to remind us of what he's been doing for us. He said, you shall keep it unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a what? Free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Now, this is a harvest that they're doing just one harvest, but there's three harvests. And so we have one harvest we're doing, and that is the total of all three in a sense. We're doing what we call our yearly salary. Okay, a free will offering according to, I can say, your yearly salary, how he has blessed thee. Okay, and 11, it says, and thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God. Amen. Amen. God always likes church. You know, he's like, come on, I want y'all to gather and rejoice and get excited because I'm giving you something to do that's going to have me bless you even more. Okay. So he said, and thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God. Who are you going to rejoice before? Not before me, not before others, but thou shalt rejoice. Now, I don't know if you know that this is not rejoicing. Amen. That ain't, that ain't, I don't know what, if I gave you a couple million dollars, you wouldn't be. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. I'm feeling mighty better now. No, that's a, that, I guarantee you, you will shout. You will make a joyful noise. So he said, rejoice before the Lord. It said, thy sons, your daughters, your manservants, maidservants, the Levites that are within the city, the preachers, you know, get the pastors together and rejoice with them. Amen. Yeah. That is within the gate and the strangers rejoice. Yeah. Amen. Our visitors are strangers to us and we are strangers to them. So let us rejoice. Yeah. Amen. Because he said even now. Amen. Rejoice. Okay. The fatherless and the widows that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God has chosen to place his name. All right. Some people think they placed the name on their house. I, I talked to a guy this morning. I said, listen, let's go to church today. He said, I go to church every Sunday. I see you walking down the street. You are not going to church. I see you going back into your house. You are not going to church. The name is not on your house. All right. The Lord's name is here. This is the Lord's house. Every church is considered the Lord's house. A place of what? Worship. Jesus gave the first name. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer. Amen. This is the Lord's house. This is where his name is. Amen. I thank God. We could just call it God's house. But then every church be called God's house. Where do you go? I go to God's house. Okay. What God's house? Where is your God's house? You know, the house that you go to. So there's different. So we, we couldn't name it just God's house or the Lord's house. We had to put names of first. They put names of where it was. You know, in Revelation, you see all the names of all where the churches were. So this would be the Church of San Diego. But we can't call it the Church of San Diego because there's a lot of churches in San Diego. There's like five churches down the street. I would like, come to my church. Where's your church at? It's, it's the Church of San Diego. Okay. Is there anything that might change that? Well, I can give you the address. But people get lost. Amen. Without their phone. And so we had to give it. Grace Covenant Christian Church of the Harvest. Amen. So, so he said, the church, church that has my name. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Now, we must remember that there was a time when we were, what do you call it, uh, in bondage. 
we were prisoners of our sin. We we're captive and it found it difficult to become free. And then when we received Christ in our life, we became free. And he gave us liberty. No longer are we afraid of falling short. We just repent. Amen. And fight not to do it again. Remember that you were captive. Okay. 13 said, thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacle seven days after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. Amen. There's that rejoicing and that praise and worship and getting excited in God and magnifying his name. Now, remember, the Feast of Tabernacle was they, they he, he wanted them. Remember, when you came out of bondage, you you went into these are this is the second uh, harvest. And you went into the uh, uh, the 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 wilderness and you had to have tents. And so you remember when the Pentecost happened, it says, and they were all in one place. Well. And then he said, all these people, thousands upon thousands of people were there. Three thousand of them received salvation after Peter gave his sermon. Amen. Now, now, where do you think these people came from? All these people came in there. Now, you know, thousands upon thousands, there ain't no place to, to, to put these house, all these people. They had to set their tents. They set their tents out. Amen. And that's the, the, the Feast of Tabernacle. Uh, and so... And 14 said, and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou, thy sons, your daughters, your manservants, your maidservants, your Levites, your strangers, your fatherless, your widows. All of them going to get up in here and we going to rejoice. Amen. They're going to do this within the gates. 15 says, seven days thou shalt keep the solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Amen. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy increase. Amen. Why are we keeping it? The feast, because the Lord wants to bless us in all of our increase. Amen. And in all the works of your hands, therefore, shalt thou be joyful. Amen. You get an increase, you gonna get excited. Amen. If he bless your 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 salary and you get an increase, you're going to get excited. Except if you didn't get nothing, you might not get much. Amen. Amen. And if you didn't do it as a free will offering, if you are giving today and it's not a free will offering, you need to change your mind. And say, OK, God. All right. I give to you free will, not out of pressure. Amen. And let God bless you. This is what this is all about. And if you do, you will surely rejoice because God's going to increase. Okay. 16. Verse 16 says, three times in a year shall all thy male appear before the Lord thy God in a place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and the feast of weeks and the feast of the tabernacle. And they shall not appear before the Lord. What? Empty. Don't come before the Lord with nothing. Don't come to church with nothing. This is the Lord's house. Amen. Don't say you got nothing. Because you still here. Everybody look pretty healthy than me. You eating pretty good. After service, you're going to go buy something else. So don't come here with nothing. Don't come empty handed. All right. Now to bring it to down to earth for people. I always like to say, whenever you throw a party or something, whenever you have Thanksgiving, whenever you have uh, uh, Christmas dinners and all that kind of, you expect family to come with something. Don't bring your whole tribe and y'all ain't got nothing but Tupperware to take stuff back home. Hey Amen. Come with something. Call. Ask me. You want me to bring some soda? You want me to bring this? You know I can make that? You know I got that pudding pie? You know I can do this? I can do that? Yeah, bring that, bring that, bring that. Amen. But don't come empty. Amen. But we we a little different. My wife be like, hey, bring your Tupperware here. We got to take this stuff home. Y'all need to take this stuff because we ain't going to eat all this stuff. And our freezer only holds so much, you know. It's like a time castle. Just holding stuff for years. <laughs> Amen. Open it up and say, wow, when did we have this? 
<laughs> you know. So she'd be like, take this stuff home. So don't come before the Lord empty handed. Every man shall give as he is able. I want to stipulate on that. I want you to really understand. I want you, God says, I want you to give as you are able. Amen. If you are able to give 1% of your, your uh, yearly salary, then give 1%. You able to give two percent to give two percent. You able to give five then give five. You able to give ten to give ten. If you able, Amen, to give a half a percent, that's all you able. I heard in the Bible it said, "All you, I, I've done all I can do. After I've done it all, that's all I can do. I can't do no more after I've done it all." If you able to give a half a cent, then give a half a cent. If you make it fifty thousand, a half a one percent would be what? 500? Half of that is 250. Can't handle that? Half of the 250 then is what? 175? 125? Well, half of 125 is what? Okay, keep going half. Just keep going half until you get to something you're able. Hey Amen. If you get to zero, then you ain't able to be here. You need to be at, at somewhere else or you can come here for sure. Come up, let me get my financial oil out. We're going to grease you down and we're going to pray for God to fix you so that you will be able to give. That means you're jobless. You ain't got no job and you're living at home and you ain't got no money. But even when we were kids and we didn't have no job and we were living at home, we still went to mom and said, mom, I need a quarter for some tithes and offering. She'd be like, but you didn't make nothing. I would, well, give me a dime then. I need to put something in the back. I can't be walking up there with nothing. I can't come before the Lord empty handed. Amen. So that is what Pentecost is about. To bring to God an offering of your first fruits. Amen. Your first fruits. Now, you know, Jesus was the first fruit when he died. He died on on Passover and uh, and the second day was the the feast of the unleavened bread where sin was taken out of the world and then when he rose again that was the first fruits and that's why he said to the sister don't touch me i have not ascended before my father i have to go before the father and be accepted and once i am accepted then the the, the what i paid will cover all once the first fruits the first fruits is the first to rise. Jesus was the first to rise. And the first to ripen. And he was brought before the Lord. Perfect. Amen. And God said, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. And he said, I have accepted him. And then he came back and he dealt with his disciples. Forty days. He, well, 50 days, well, 40 days, he dealt with his disciples. And then, uh, Ten days after he had descended, the power came. Amen. When God said that, that, uh, um, that he will bless you, you know, when you give, he will bless you. And I always say, how can you rob God from blessing you? How can a man rob God? And I always say that a man can rob God by robbing him of his desire to bless you. Amen. Children sometimes rob their parents of their desire to bless them. They, they'll, you'll, you'll tell your kid, listen, if you uh, do this, then I am going to bless you. And so you're waiting for Christmas to parents just so they can get that for their kid. They, they are getting excited to get that for their kid. But their kid has to be in a certain place. And their kid end up not doing what they were told to do. And now the parents are sad because they can't give them what they wanted to give them. God is the same. God says, don't rob me. If you rob me, then you are taking from me my desire to give to you. And so that's concerning tithes and offering. But this is Pentecost. So put your vow in. And so I set up a certain amount of time. You got three months. If you can't pay off your vow in three months, then you were not able Give what you are able to give. I'm not one of these churches to tell you, come on, you can do better than that. 
Oh, come on. Ooh, I could see five people in here that can give $2,000. I see it right now. I see it. Of course. Of course, anybody can give $2,000. You know, the question is, you know, can you give it all right now? And so what do we do? We did something called give a quarter to God and watch him give you a house just to let you know that God is able to give to you no matter what you give to him. Even if you're unfaithful, the Bible says God is always faithful toward us. Amen. And so then we have this right here, Pentecost vow. Amen. If you don't have one of these, you should get one. The Pentecost vow is a vow that you're going to make before the Lord. Amen. And you're going to ask God that, I mean, you're going to make a vow. Lord, I'm going to show up to church every Sunday early. That'd be one big time vow. Uh, Lord, I, I make a vow that I'm going to start reading my Bible uh, two days out of the week. Come on now. Because some of you don't read but once on Sunday when the pastor is reading. All right. Uh, make a vow. Lord, I'm going to pray on my knees before I go to sleep every night. Mm, mm, that's a vow. Amen. Lord, I'm going I'm to pay all of my tithes every Sunday. I mean, every time I get paid. Uh, that's a vow because some of you ain't paying all of it. You're saving some. Whew. Lord, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a stop cursing. Because some of you can't help yourself. Can't help you. Every other word. Amen. All right, come on. Yeah, I know people in the church ain't supposed to be cursing, but they be cursing. Uh, Lord, I'm going to stop drinking. That's half of the church right there. I'm going to stop drinking. <laughs> yep, yep, Lord, yep, yep, yep. Come on, Jesus. Help a brother out. Help me out, Lord. I'm going to stop drinking. Now, even if it's Bud Light, it ain't light of Jesus. It ain't the light of Jesus, so you can't be drinking it. Amen. Thank you for listening to this short excerpt. If you would like to view the full service, please go to our YouTube channel, Grace Cove One, find the full list of videos, and search for the video titled Full Service and Sermon. We also welcome you to join us at Grace Covenant at 285 Clay Avenue. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, God is over all.